When comparing Python to other languages, people will tell you a lot of things that Python doesn't have. So they'll say that it doesn't have private class attributes, they'll say it doesn't have strong typing, and a lot of them will say that it doesn't have function and method overloading. But this is actually a very common misconception because Python actually does, and it even has it in its standard library. The only difference is that the implementation is very different to how it is in a lot of other languages. There are also two very different implementations in Python, one using the standard library and the second uh, more fully featured uh, variation of it provided by a third party. So in this video, I'll be showing you how to do the simplified version with the standard library and then the more complicated uh, but more fully featured version using the third party package, which means this will be the first a video in the channel's history to be both part of the Python is Awesome series and the Python Plus series, which I can guarantee is not going to get confusing at all. If you find this video helpful at any point, then consider liking to let me know and maybe subscribing if you want to see more videos like this. If you want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so by either becoming a member or a patron. All the information you need is in the description below. For those of you that don't know what I mean by function and method overloading, let me quickly explain it for you. So in C or other languages, I'm going to be using Python codes to make this easier to explain, but you'd have something like this where you'd have like an int or an, um, an add function. And then that returns X plus Y and it would take ints. And then you have a second one that took floats or the language equivalent type, whatever that might be. And that would also return X and Y. And both of these functions would exist in the namespace at the same time. And whichever function was called would be determined by the type of the arguments that were provided to it. So for example, if you provided two integers, then it would run this top one. If you provided two float likes, it would um, run this bottom one. In Python, we don't have that. Only one uh, function or method can exist in the namespace at once. And it's not really as vital to have something like this because Python has dynamic typing, which means that any function can accept an, an argument of any type at any time. But there are certainly instances in which you would want to use function overloading because it cleans up the code. The other option is to use if is instance checks. And while those are useful in their own regard, having this huge monolithic function that you know handles multiple different types isn't necessarily the best way to go about things. This functionality is called dispatching. And in our standard library, we only have single dispatching. And in our third party library, we have multiple dispatching. So in the case of single dispatching, the function to be run will be determined by the type of the first arguments and the first argument only. In multiple dispatching, it would be determined by the type of every argument present. If we were happy dispatching using the first argument only, then we could do from functals import single dispatch. I've done a video on the rest of functal or like a good chunk of functals already. That'll be in the cards if you want to see it because it is a very nice uh, thing to have. And then we can decorate a function using single dispatch. And we're going to say uh, our function is called describe. And then we pass an argument, which can be basically anything. And then we're just going to return unknown type in here. And this will serve as our um, base function or default function. So when we would define all our other alternative functions, we'll define them all with types. Um, if none of those types match, then this will be run. So if you want to return, then you can. You can also raise not implemented error if you feel that's better for you. But to register other functions, we just need to use describe.register. And then we can define our function and call it anything. A general convention I've seen is to name it just using a single underscore, which works for me. And then we're going to pass an arg there. And say we want this function uh, to take a string. There are two ways that we can tell this function to call on a string. So we can either pass it as an argument to uh, the decorator here, or we can use a type hint. Either way works. Uh, it doesn't matter which you use, um, but yeah. If your code is typed, then you will already be using type hints. If your code is untyped, then you can just pass it to the decorator if you really want to. Um, and then we can have, say, another one uh, that takes both a list, a tuple, and then also a set. I don't know why I said both when there was three options in that list. But if you want to do that, then you can either use the, the union type or the pipe, or if you're going the untyped route, then you can pass it like that. 
and then have a tuple and a set like this. So you can use um, decorator stacking on these when registering and that's the easiest way to register multiple types. You can use the union syntax in here, but I think at that point you might as well just pass it as a type hint to be perfectly honest. And then if we wanted to do something like this, we could do a uh, type, uh, uh, we'll just say, it, we'll keep it simple, a collection of uh, three, if it is three, elements. There we go. It's just my example has three, so that's why I thought of that. And if we wanted to do a numerical one, then you could do describe.register and then int and then float and then def arg like that. And then we can do return a number. I'm going to give you a free hint while we're here. Instead of doing something like this, you can do from, I think it's numbers import number. There you go. And this uh, type can be used instead of this like that. And now we take any numerical type we want and it will return and it will say that it's a number. So if we do if name equals main down here, like this, our run guard that we do in every script. And then we do print describe uh, hello world. It will say that that's a string. If we want to describe a list like that, it will say that it's a collection. And if we do something like this, it will say that it's a number. So if we then uh, run that like that, we can see that our first element, which is hello world, is a string. Our second element is a collection of three elements. And our third uh, function is a number. If we're then passing something that it doesn't know, so let's describe, I've done that wrong. Uh, let's do a dict of say one equals one and then two equals two like that because we haven't given it an overload, then it will say that it's an unknown type. It defaults to this one, which is our base function that it runs, if no types um, uh, match the ones we've overloaded. So this is just a really nice way of cleaning up your code if you have you know, a complex logic pattern that requires working through multiple um, types, for example. You can also do this in a method if you want. So I'm gonna do class test and then bring these all in. And then instead of single dispatch, we're going to import single dispatch method. And then this is going to be method as well. We just leave these as describe.register because it will be able to tell that. And then we define uh, an instance here. And then we do t.describe. And then I have messed that up. Oh, yeah. We need to provide the self argument to each. Um, yeah, and the difference between single dispatch and single dispatch method is just that the self argument is ignored when dispatching. And now it will run exactly the same using the method. One important thing to note is that single dispatch does not limit you to a single argument. A function or a method that's overloaded in this fashion can take as many arguments as you want. But as I said earlier, only the first will be used to determine which function is actually called. This was an intentional decision, and I forget which pep number it is, I'll put it on the screen. Um, but the idea was that having multiple dispatch in that way, especially in Python, was a bit of an anti-pattern and it made the implementation a lot more complex, where a lot of people probably wouldn't need that extra functionality. But if you do need that extra functionality, if you really, really need it, then some people um, in the world somewhere have got your back because they have created a Python package that can do that. So if we do multiple.py and then we open up our console and if we do pip install multiple dispatch. Now take care when writing this. If you're used to calling it multi dispatch for whatever reason, multi dispatch is a package but it's a significantly older one that hasn't been updated in about 10 years and it's not the same one. The multiple dispatch is the one you want. I already have it installed as of recording the latest release is 1.0.0 and it has been for a little while. I think it's at the point where they've kind of added everything that they wanted to. Uh, but if we did from multiple dispatch import dispatch 
And then for the sake of our types in the example that I'm going to use, we want to do from numbers import number again. And this dispatch works very differently. It works more similarly um, to other languages. So you have your dispatch uh, decorator there and you have your function here. So we'll use the add example from earlier. And then we'll create one that can take any number and any number and then it returns a number. And then we have return x plus y. You can also pass say number, number in here like that. And it will do the same thing if you have untyped code. But if you wanted to find our default, we use dispatch again, and then we define another function called add. And then we have, we use object as our type hints or type, I guess, declarations. And in this instance, we're gonna return a string and we're gonna simply string concatenate the two together, like that. So we'll use the string representation of the object to construct a string using the plus. It's just an easy um, thing. You can also have a, a varying number of arguments if you want. So you can do dispatch and then we can have adds just X number and then we return the number, and then we're just going to return x plus 1 out of this. So if we did if name equals uh, main, and then print add 1 and 2, print add, say, 1.6, and then print, I don't know, um, add, say, a string and a ball, that'd be an interesting example to have. And if we run pi multiple.py, we can see that in this first example, we um, got a result of three, meaning it added one plus two together. So it used, it used this one here. In the second example, we only passed one argument and it returned 2.6. So it ran this one because it just, you know, added one to the number we passed. And in our third example, we got one plus true so it's you know, created a string using the string representations of our object as our default because object is kind of, well, I suppose if you wanted to get a default, you could put type in here if you really wanted to um, because type is the superclass of object. But I think object is probably the safer one to do. I think maybe if you did types, you might have um, slightly different intentions for those. If you do something that's invalid, uh, so say if we did add and then just like a string of the number five, we'll get an error and it would give you quite a concise um, or quite a verbose error actually. Uh, it will give you a not implemented error, could not find signature for add and then our string type because we haven't defined anything um, that only has one object. We've defined something for two objects, but we never defined something for just one object. Um, so it will complain at us in an error. In theory, you could also use this multiple dispatch to create a strongly typed um, function. So you could, if we got rid of both of these, just have that one. And then if it found anything that wasn't that, then it would just error for you. So in this case, you know, we've passed something that isn't two numbers and it would just error. And it would do the same for this. There's nothing for string and ball, so it would just immediately error. So you could use multiple dispatch to enforce strong typing if you really wanted to. So if that was something you were interested in, then that's potentially uh, an option or an avenue you could take. So that is everything that I wanted to talk about with regard to function and method overloading. I just want to thank my amazing patrons and members on screen now, especially Mizard Rosherman III for being super generous. One pound a month and you can be on that screen with them. And I will see you in the next video for what will be the Christmas special. Yeah, we're at that time of the year already. <laughs> um, so I hope you're feeling festive, if of course you celebrate all that. And if you don't celebrate all that, I hope you're having a good time anyway. And I'll see you on the 25th.